Well, on this video, I'm going to cover the seven mistakes that we've seen people and some that unfortunately we've made investing in real estate abroad. We've done tons of deals. For those of you who are seeing us for the first time, we've bought real estate in the south of France, bought in Costa Rica, bought in Miami, bought in Sedona in the US, in Switzerland, in Greece, in Italy, on the island of Sardinia, and Montenegro, and other locations. We have a lot of experience buying, selling in beautiful locations like here. We're in Rhodes, on the town of Lindos, you can see a little bay down there, absolutely beautiful, the little whitewashed villages up there. So we're here and we love to go to beautiful locations and look at investing in real estate. And uh, yeah, we've also had our fair share of, um, you know, bad deals, not that many to be honest, but or just mistakes we've seen people make. So we're gonna share seven of those in the video today. So if you're ready, let's jump in, here we go. All right, so, Let's go into mistake number one. Mistake number one is if you're looking at countries, um, don't invest in countries with shady rules or super complex legal and title systems. What do I mean? Well, you know, um, I'll give you an example. So I was out uh, in Mexico in uh, uh, the Tulum area and very interested uh, in maybe investing in some real estate, looking at prices, seem reasonable. And I started to research, you know, just making sure there's no risks in terms of if I buy a place that no one else can later come and say, hey, wait a second, you know, am I, you know, someone else has a lien or a claim over it. And there was actually an article that came out in the New York Times at the time about some people who own, built beautiful houses. And then some people came and said, well, my great and you know, grandfather, my ancestors had this land. It was their land, it was part of a tribe. And basically these people were pretty much gonna lose their land. And when I realized that that was a risk, I decided, you know what, doesn't make sense. And in fact, if you look at, there's quite a few countries around the world where there is this risk. You have to be very careful. Um, I know one of my closest friends, uh, he lives in Chile. He bought some land overlooking the sea, beautiful. He loves to surf, oh, it's cold water, but he, you know, and he rents them out. So he lives off of rental uh, revenue, short-term rental Airbnb of these houses. And he wanted to diversify and he used to go surfing in Peru. So he decided, hey, let me go see if I can buy and do the same thing, right? Buy some land, build a house, get some good rental revenue, live off of that or add to his rental revenue. And, um, so he went and one of the challenges was that there wasn't a center, uh, you know, where they have all the titles, meaning you couldn't verify 100%. What, what does that mean is that someone could sell you a plot of land, tell you it's buildable, sell it to someone else, and there was no depository central place where you could check that you were the only owner. And therefore he said, oh, you know, I'm not gonna do that. And there's actually, you'll be surprised quite a few countries. So in our case, that's been always the number one criteria. Number one thing we need to check is, you know, what are the rules? And we're only gonna buy where we know that there's no risk. And that's why we bought in Costa Rica, because it's, you know, quite a clean system. So one of the reasons why, in fact, we decided to buy in uh, Montenegro, if you uh, watch our videos about that experience, it's been phenomenal. Uh, although still, you know, you have to be careful because there are properties in Montenegro that do not have the building. So houses were built without a building permit and what they'll tell you is they'll sell it to you and say, oh, we're in the process of legalization. And yes, that does happen. So even there, you have to be super careful. So we just stay very, you know, stay far from anything that doesn't have the right paperwork. So mistake number one is buying in a country with really complex or shady legal system. You know, some of you might wonder why, why even take the risk? Why, you know, why go and buy abroad in a, in a country you don't necessarily know the rules? And you know, for us, it started out as as a dream. It was this dream of saying, you know, do I really want to spend my time in one location, one country? Like, why do we go on holidays to different places? Because we love that diversity. Why do we go to? I mean, look at this place here. This beautiful, you know, uh, it's just blue skies. You know, the water. Um, why wouldn't we want to invest and own a place there? And the dream was is if we could own in multiple locations and the places make money, they provide passive income. So like many watchers here, I've read many books, including Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and How to Make Money in Real Estate. Well, we picked a little bit, you know, um, a particular path. We decided to say, you know, let's um, not buy real estate in one location in one country, but go and buy different locations, you know, either buy a house and rent it out or 
buy a lot, build a house and rent it out, you know, different models, buy an apartment, rent it out to generate you know, rental income. And also for us to have a place beautiful to go to, like our place in the mountains, and we have a video about it in Grindelwald, it's beautiful chalet, loved renovating it, just redid the studio below, love going there with the family, you know, go skiing, go in the summer, go hiking. So we have a place, it's ours, you know, it's amazing. We have a, a, a room that's locked up, we put all of our gear, it's just such an amazing feeling. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I'd rather have that than have some stock. I, I understand it, but stock for me is great. It's a number on a piece of paper, but I can't go and live in it. I can't go and enjoy it. I, there's not much I can do. I just can invest. So for us, the idea of having real estate in beautiful locations that we could actually use and take advantage of and go to and spend time, we said, you know, that's quality of life. That's smart investments. Um, and that's, well, what we've done. So, all right, mistake number two, not going to multiple realtors. The first time you go to the country and you wanna go and see, get a better sense of the properties you've identified, understand the rules, well, just make sure you go and meet with multiple realtors. And there's many reasons for this is, one, you know, they will be biased. They're gonna, they are salespeople, they're gonna try to sell you a story. You wanna cross that story. You wanna ask the same questions. Uh, for us, that's one reason why, you know, we met with multiple realtors in Montenegro, because we wanted to be 100% sure we understood the rules. And therefore, also because we wanted to get a sense of who, you know, we had a good feeling with, we could trust, uh, was not overly selling us something. So that's mistake number two, going to only one realtor. All right, let's move to mistake number three. Mistake number three is not getting independent, you know, third party validation verification. So going with the recommendations of one contact. Let's just say for instance, um, you know, you get along well with the realtor and the realtor tells you, oh, he's got a great lawyer uh, to do the paperwork. He has a great engineer to go do the site survey and provide all the you know, confirmations that the land is buildable. Um, he has an architect he recommends. Now, at first you might think, wow, you know, that's just so convenient. Um, it's just, why wouldn't you not go with the recommended person? Um, because it will save you time. But in fact, it's a big mistake. You need the independent view because if that realtor is not telling you the full story and is basically with these other, with the engineer and the other people are also in it in terms of not sharing some of the pitfalls or risks of what you're buying, then you can find yourself in a very difficult situation. And we unfortunately have made this mistake uh, and it was a very painful one. And I'll share in a separate video. Uh, you know, we're very proud of the fact that we've, you know, made good money in real estate over the years, made great investments, but like anybody, every so often you can make mistakes. And this was a mistake we made. So just get that independent, you know, third party, go find someone else that validates, you know, get a second engineer, spend a little bit of money up front just to make sure that, you know, you have the facts straight. All right, let's move to mistake number four. Mistake number four, if you are um, buying to do long-term rental, okay? So the idea is, and uh, many people you know, do this, they buy a property, put 20% down, and then the goal is that the renter um, will pay off all the mortgage, all costs, even more, so that you reimburse the debt faster. And so we had a project um, in Miami, we had identified an area where prices were still interesting, a uh, lot of upside potential in terms of capital value, um, and anyways, great property came on the market, amazing price, went, moved very fast on it, closed immediately, offered full price. Um, and so we had this property, had a bit of fixing, but you know, an amazing, amazing deal. And, um, but you know, we're paying the mortgage, we have repairs to do, so cash is going out. We're quite eager to get it rented quickly. So we go out and we go with the first person that the realtor, um, you know, that signs up, says interested in renting, you know, decent credit score background. And unfortunately, you know, rather than waiting a bit, seeing others, trying to find, you know, we we found out after a very short little while that um, this person was actually renting for his son. So it was his credit financials. He was paying the rent. Son was a student. Well, you know what? The son had lots of parties and tons of people sleeping there. And we had lots of issues, pretty much trashed the place. After 10 months, the father decided, oh, he didn't want to pay anymore the rent. So ultimately, well, you know, we had to kick him out. And it was, you know, 
it ended up being a bit of a disaster and and mostly because we just had the wrong wrong tenants we just had the wrong people renting the house and uh, now it was okay because you know we sold the house uh, we bought it for 500,000 sold it for 620 one year later we decided just to liquidate it also just to build the quality of the build in Miami some of these houses there's always something breaking we just decided it wasn't built well enough but um ended up making some money on it, but that was a mistake uh, that could have been avoided. So, um, so that was mistake number four. All right, let's move to mistake number five. Um, and this is when you're buying abroad um, and you want to do short-term rental. So you have to spend the time to find the right management company, cleaning company, and person to do repairs. So the mistake is, is to buy a place, try to start renting it out, and you haven't you know, covered your basis. You haven't gone in these companies. And what's going to happen is, and, and we've actually experienced this, you know, one of our first properties that, um, a first property that I owned was in uh, south of France in Provence in an area called the Luberon. It was a stone house, beautiful, you know, these arches, uh, you know, four bedroom, really nice. But we kept getting complaints. Why? Because the cleaning company was doing a shit job. And, uh, you know, people would be saying, they'd send photos of the, the feet of their children who'd run around barefoot and they were just, you know, just black dirt. So and it took us a very long time. It's so hard to find a good cleaning company. And what's going to happen, things are going to break, right? You're going to have, I don't know, issues. And you can't rely on the renters to be just like smart and figure stuff out. And so you need to have someone on backup to go solve issues. So most important is to have a good cleaning company and someone, a handyman or on call who can go and fix issues and or you use a management company and they cover all this so the mistake is to not go with that try to manage it all by yourself remotely and run into tons of issues and potentially people complaining and then you get bad reviews and that's really not good for uh, for your rental business all right mistake number six if you stretch yourself too thin and don't have the cash when you're buying a place to rent out there's always going to be unexpected things that need to be fixed. When we bought the house in Miami, we just realized there was a whole bunch of things that had been done. It looked nice on the surface. It was pretty, but below the surface, there was core issues we had to fix. There was a septic tank. The septic tank was full. There had been some leak in the past in the roof. It had been patched up. But when the first torrential rain came down in Miami, I tell you, it can rain. Boom, water was dripping into a room. They had done a nice job covering up. So. You know, we, we hadn't seen that. So you just need to make sure we had put quite a bit of money up front that we had not expected. And in all the properties we bought in the beginning phase, you need to have that envelope of cash to fix stuff up, right? My, you know, in, in our house in Sedona, well, you know, not long after buying, ultimately we realized the AC units were just not cooling the house enough. And, you know, in a hot location with renters, you just can't have that. So, you know, that can quickly be, you know, a couple thousand dollars to go replace. So just make sure you have enough money on the side for the unexpected. Um, and let's move finally, last but not least, to mistake number seven. And I call this the too good to be true, meaning if it's too good to be true, well, then it's probably not true. What do I mean is if you go on a location and uh, let's just say plots of land overlooking the sea are going for 300,000, you know, 400,000, and suddenly you find the deal of the century, you find something for 150, 180, that just sounds amazing. You know, everybody in real estate out there is there to make money. Um, people don't want to necessarily sell at a loss. You might find a good deal, but if it looks like an amazing deal and it looks like it's too good to be true, then I would be very careful. And what I would say in real estate is, um, you know, listen to your gut, listen to your intuition. Um, we've had sometimes uh, some, you know, a little bit of a bad vibe, but the head, the reason was like, but look, it's amazing and the lawyer, confirms and everything looks right you're just being paranoid well you know what in our experience is when the gut is telling you something smells not right even if everything looks perfect on paper I don't know sometimes you need to walk away and I would say and I'll share in another video uh, one of our worst experiences financially and we've you know we've done very well in real estate over the years uh, you know it's a passion it's a hobby it's an occupation uh, we love going to places like this, looking at real estate, deciding to invest, not invest, um, helping others. But um, yeah, we've also made our mistakes. And, uh, and mo you know, when that's happened, well, I can tell you the gut feeling was telling us don't go ahead. We went ahead and ultimately um, 
Oh yeah, and we, we lost some money. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, make sure you click the like button, subscribe, more videos to come about our experiences, buying property around the world in beautiful locations, investing, diversifying our income, and, uh, and owning places in the sun. Thank you very much, and see you in a future video.